got a board here, uh, eight quarter, I think it's eucalyptus. Um, when I uh, did a little trial planting here, it's extremely aromatic. It appears to be uh, medium hardness, um, interlock grain, road grain, uh, so that could be, causes some difficulties in the final finishing. Uh, not too badly uh, out of flat, uh, too bad to cut, got some waviness to it. Uh, I'm going to use the traditional planes because uh, I, as I've said before, I think they're the uh, most effective for, for uh, milling down uh, hardwoods. I'm going to use the traditional jack plane in the English pattern, the joiner plane, smoothing plane. Now these are the three basic planes that we'll use. Um, there are a few others that kind of go in between here that uh, are auxiliary uh, and are quite useful but not necessary. Um, one is the scrub plane and um, I recommend uh, the wooden scrub plane. It's lighter, it's far more comfortable. Um, uh, this blade in particular is quite a nice blade. It turns out it's an inlaid uh, laminated steel blade and um, modified it a little bit for extra comfort. So that goes, if we, if we were to use it, it would go before the jack. Uh, possibly, on the board this size, I'm considering using the four plane, which is like a number six in the Stanley. Uh, this is set up with a little more blade curvature than this one, so it would be stepped between the jack and the joiner. And because the length of the board, this will uh, help me achieve true trueness, flatness of the board quicker than just using this. And there is a bit of curve to this blade to deal with um, the trenching that we're going to be doing and uh, to go straight to a smoothing plane which has a pretty straight blade uh, a lot of times I'll use an intermediate length plane which will give me a very flat and smooth surface it's got a pretty straight blade just slightly dubbed on the corners before I take the jump to the smoothing plane so and this is getting pretty much the full set of planes um, that's in my book actually. I made a second plane. This, uh, this plane's at 50. This plane's at 55 degrees. So I have particularly uh, hard and tough. I might actually go to yet another plane at a steeper pitch. Um, like I say, you can do all this without all these planes. Uh, it will take you a little more adjustment and a little more sharpening. Uh, questions on how to hold the work. Um, in the old days, they had single single stop down there of one sort or another, but the board can rotate, especially since on a board like this, you're going to have to work some cross grain and or diagonally, which is going to twist the board. So um, sometimes I've taken pieces of plywood because you have to be some distance away. You can't have a clamp right up at the edge. Um, I mean, within two feet, if you're using the joiner plane, you have to use it a bit on the diagonal. So you can take plywood or spacers and have them clamped at the far edge of the board, um, uh, what they call a doze foot, that can be used. Uh, but for this, really, bench dogs are a great invention. They um, basically were invented for this type of thing. Uh, and I find that square ones rotate, well, they don't rotate, and the round ones occasionally do rotate. So uh, square dogs I prefer myself. Uh, I also generally, you take a look at the board, uh, which we'll discuss a bit, uh, I generally put the crown up. Now, I know a lot of people don't do that. There's uh, reasons why I do it. Uh, it doesn't show so much here, but uh, a lot of times if you've got a board with a, it's badly crowned and bowed, it's just like a potato chip sitting up on the bench. And in order to work on the concave side, you have to shim up at least three corners, if not all four corners. And those shims don't like to stay put. Uh, there's up and down pressure. Once the shims shift, then the board shifts, and the board pops out of the dogs. 
and that can happen over and over again. And so I've kind of gotten in the habit of uh, putting the concave side down, crown up. Uh, worst case on that, you only have one corner to shim, and um, it usually doesn't pop out of the dogs if you lose your shim on that. Uh, you could say you're planing more off, but it's very, very small amount more. Uh, it's only the amount of the curve because, I mean, if you visualize it, you take a straight line across the crown. It's basically the same amount. The only difference is uh, due to the slight curve that naturally curves in the board. But if you're uh, doing the whole board by hand, then it doesn't make any difference because you're taking the same amount off regardless of which side you start on. Uh, I also don't like, uh, myself, personal preference, uh, working on the concave side, skipping across the narrow uh, edges where I'm cutting a little bit here, no cut, cut on the far side. It seems like a lot of wasted effort to me, but that's just my personal preference. Uh, and you're also all, always working at the edge, which just increases your chances of spelching out the grain on the, on the, work, on the far side. So anyway, get your board mounted and then take a look at it. You'll need a couple things. Most importantly, you'll need some winding sticks. Any two sticks, uh, which you can grab out of the wood pile, uh, can be used as long as they're parallel. They don't even have to be the same width. They just have to be parallel. Make up yourself a set of winding sticks that you can guarantee they're always parallel as long as they're oriented in the same direction as they are pinned together. So take a look at your board. See how much uh, cup we have. You can check it along the way. This one has some knots and, and uh, burls in it and so it's uh, there's tension in those spots and it's lumpy essentially where those are. I flattened this off a little bit just to see how the woodwork. You can scope that out and then set your winding sticks at either end and see what your twist is like side long. And okay, actually this one's this is sitting on a high spot here, but as it sits, it's parallel. So what I'm going to want to do is flatten this out, check it again, make sure it's parallel. And that'll be my reference plane. I'm going to put two reference planes, one at either end, and make those parallel. And then straighten the board out in between those two points, basically, the function. Smaller boards, I don't often use a long straight edge. Sometimes siding it or using the joiner plane is enough. Again, this one is pretty good. Got a high spot here, lower here. So we're going to have to level out this area and bring it down to the ends. The, the reason why the jack plane and the scrub plate are so effective is the shape of the blade. But but also it's important that you use them in the right manner. And the best way to use them is not with the grain nor across the grain. Either one will, uh, especially going with the grain, will just rip out big chunks. There's no throat on this. There's no chip breaker. It gets in there deep. Similar fashion, it's usually not quite as disastrous, going across, it grabs up bundles of, uh, of grain, of wood fibers, and um, oftentimes that will tear it up. The best way to use it is on a diagonal. The blade set out on this one. It's on a diagonal. Uh, this, because the blade is curved, and if you go, for instance, starting here at the left and working back into the wood this way, 
you will always be shearing on a kind of downhill with the grain with the waste already cleared away so you get a much cleaner cut it's a little hard to describe uh, sometimes I've attempted to describe it with using a broom this represents the the grain so when you're cutting here you're cutting with these fibers so I would be moving back this way I would not be going here and cutting into these fibers like this so you have to kind of try and visualize that it looks pretty parallel I got to lower this in here you can see the light in here and also I see the grain is got a bit of a crotch here so um, this may affect which direction I make my initial cuts I may have to rotate the board to get it in a better position board this wide you may have to rotate it regardless uh, so as I said my basic technique is to create a, a land shall we say which is a flat spot on both ends that's straight across level flat across and parallel to the far end uh, a couple different ways of dealing with the area in between if uh, there's a, enough to mark actually you can put a chalk line on that between the two low spots on either end and snap a line and you can work down to that line and do that on both sides or you can snap a line and then take your plane and chamfer it right down to the line especially if you like to work uh, concave side up um, that will uh, reduce the spelching that goes off the far side uh, because you've got that chamfer on there and you work it down until the chamfer just disappears and you should have actually a flat board and, uh, and zero chamfer it's hard to say uh, this board's going to change direction in grain quite a bit with this crotch down here several knots and it's interlocked grain road grain uh, which means uh, in places it changes direction about every inch so let's create our land down here on the far end let's try the scrub plane Up pretty deep here. All right. Let's try that. Well, we could take a little more. this is eucalyptus but it's a North American eucalyptus I believe it hybridized a bit beautiful colors though yellows and pinks still high in the middle down a little bit
I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but this corner is quite a bit higher over here. So I have to take a lot more off and bring that down. That'll look. So I've got two flat spots at the end of the board here and they're parallel. So I'm going to bring it down uh, between those two spots. Uh, scoped it out. I've got about a quarter inch to take down here, but part of that is due to this split which has risen up. So as I said, work on a diagonal. And you can see how little tear out we got. We got some here, but considering the depth on that blade, um, we're getting very little. Most of that's in the waste of it. So it'll become obvious how important the height of the bench is when you're doing this kind of work. You really want it, probably could be a little bit lower for me. Um, otherwise your arms are doing all the work. Otherwise you're up here very high. Other, if you put the bench at the right height your hand, your arms not getting like this huge extension and contraction. You can lean into it and use more of your body. So you can keep checking. Even if you have lines around the outside, doesn't mean you terribly flat. Um, additional correction can be made with the longer plane, with the jack plane, and eventually the joiner. Some people like to squiggle. Definitely high through here. Put some extra work on that. Not quite the same high spot. Frequent checking gives you that chance to take a little break. <laughs> That's actually I'm trying to make every cut right next to the previous one. It's less work, tears out less. And I got a backtrack here because I got some low spots. So there is user input here too. This plane can go like that. Uh, so, can take a look, see what's happening across here, to high there. Pretty flat. A little high here, low there, actually. Don't want to make any more work than we have to. <laughs> okay. Definitely high through here. Which 
heading fairly straight there, so that's not too bad. Let's take some extra off on that side. So, some of you may think I'm taller than I am. I talked about the proper uh, working height. Um, I have a little board over here, it's about three inches high. It slips underneath my bench. And for when I'm doing work like this, I pull it out so I have a, uh, the bench is lower and makes it easier, a little bit easier to do this work. So this spot seems kind of high, so let's work it down. So we got, you have, there's limitations, uh, the short uh, sole of the plane. There's some wobble along the length, but uh, overall it's uh, pretty straight. And each succeeding plane will correct that, or theoretically it will. wobbly down that edge, but I think we can deal with that on the next plane, which is longer. Uh, one of the advantages of working on board um, from beginning by hand is you get to know the board pretty well. This can be important depending on what you're uh, eventually going to do with it if you're going to carve it or if you're going to hand plane it to a fine finish you know what's happening in the board uh, you don't come into it blind now when I was using the scrub plane it's tearing up badly going in one direction despite uh, the diagonal direction and that's because the grain was kind of like just aimed right uphill in that direction you can see how the fibers broke here uh, they're broken sharply here so that chip came in and then was lifted. So that means planing this, the grain is actually running uphill this way. Planing this direction caused this huge tear out, so I switched direction. But, right next door, you can see how the grain's broken here. Planing this direction tears up the grain on that direction. Um, same's true here, planing this direction tears the grain up. So you can shift the direction of your planes as you go and then as you get into the finer and finer planes um, and tear out becomes you really want to get rid of the tear out you can tolerate uh, a lot of this now but uh, in each succeeding plane the amount of tear out should be reduced until you're it's gone theoretically you can't always do that with a plane but uh, be surprised how far you can get sometimes so i think this is as far as i want to take it with a Scrub plane. 